Remember, there's some pretty important information here in the disclaimer. You might want to give the video a quick pause and read it. Oh, hey everybody, it's me, Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Just here to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button. And for even more amazing customs, don't forget to subscribe to Wake Angel 2001. Because between you and me, they're way past cool. Hello and Happy New Year, my watchers! It is Wake Angel 2001, coming at you with what was supposed to be the last custom of December, but due to the fact that I had to wait for paint to dry, it gets to be the first custom of January instead. It is for uh, Fretcher, and is his OC, Blade the Shark. Uh, now, just a quick asterisk for this reference picture. Um, the spine pattern is supposed to resemble Sonic's. It's just that the drawing style here is based on the way that they were drawn in Sonic X. Uh, as you know, in, in the Sonic X anime, Sonic always had three spines no matter what angle you looked at his head, unless he turned into Super Sonic, then you could see all six of them. Um, now, Fretcher somehow managed to get his hands on an actual mint on card Sonic figure uh, from Jazzwares, which he sent to me to use as the base for his custom. But I was like, hey, dude, these things are incredibly rare. Even finding a damaged one on eBay is getting pretty expensive, and you somehow managed to get a mince and box one, and I would feel guilty, you know, tearing it apart to make it to someone's custom. So I happen to have the necessary Sonic parts in my fodder bin, um, for context, it's a Sonic head, a pair of Shadow's hands, and a pair of Wave shoes. And um, the body could easily be a one of those Call of Duty Mega Constructs soldiers. Um, because these Mega Constructs figures are still super cheap. I was able to buy a 4-pack of them from, from Burlington Coat Factory and, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it cost me $7.99. So, you know, 8 bucks for 4 of them. It's $2 a figure. So... Yes, the base figure is going to be this Call of Duty soldier instead of the extremely rare and valuable Jazzware Sonic. So, thank you very much. Alright, so that being said, I did use a Sonic head. This is a spare severed Sonic head that's been sitting in a bag under my desk for years. So, I'm not dismantling a new figure for this anymore. And, um... You know, I cut off the ears and used some sculpting to get that shark muzzle going on. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty basic. You know, I think I could also use this technique to pull off a dolphin. Hmm. Oh, by the way, guys, um, isn't it kind of weird how rare aquatic Mobian OCs are? Um, I guess aquatic Mobians themselves are pretty rare. I can really only remember them coming from, uh... The, 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 the Archie Sonic comic. Um, cause like we have, a uh, we, we have the, the, um, the aquatic Mobians, like the goldfish and sharks and characters that appeared after the Super Genesis reboot. And before the Super Genesis reboot, we had characters that were, you know, sentient dolphins and orcas, uh, seals and sea lions and stuff. Although funnily enough, before the reboot, they were sentient, but they were still like in the animal shape you know, no legs or anything, but after the reboot, we actually got humanoid versions of them, like Aklut, the, um, the, the, uh, cybernetic killer whale that was one of the egg bosses, he existed in both before and after the, the Genesis wave, but in the post-Genesis wave, he, you know, had a humanoid body instead of being a killer whale with cybernetic attachments, uh, yeah, that's, uh, just something I'll throw out there. But really, um, aside from that, I can think of the Murhogs from the from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, and 
I guess that one walrus guy from from Son, you know, the walrus people from from Sonic Boom. If you want to count walrus as an aquatic animal, because you know they they are like seals and sea lions of the pinniped variety. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. Uh, the body. Um, he wears this little uh, surf uniform, and it kind of helps that the character is kind of broad-shouldered because it actually suits this Call of Duty body better than an actual Sonic figure would have. So I just had to sculpt over it to cover up the details of, like, you know, the pockets and clothing wrinkles and stuff like that, and add a big old dorsal fin to the back. I also sculpted on the two little fins onto the figure's forearms. And um, I modified Wave the Swallow's shoes to fit onto the Call of Duty Soldier's ankles. Call of Duty Soldier's ankles. Man, that's a mouthful. Uh, basically, it involved cutting them into this shape and then gluing the, the legs onto the platforms that were left behind. Um, now, the tail was an interesting little bit because it's something that really sticks out the back of the figure. And I came up with a clever idea to make use of some of this figure's extra articulation. Um, okay, over here, this is a belt that has a bunch of pouches on it. It's meant to be worn on the front of the character, like a kind of a utility belt thing, I guess is where you keep medical supplies and spare ammo and stuff. But uh, it could just as easily go on to the back of the figure as it could the front of the figure. And I trimmed it down so that it was a little bit shorter to allow me to sculpt, um, sculpt the tail on. Its attachment point is primarily that, that you know, that back of the belt. I mean, it is attached to the figure's butt as well, but being part of the belt means that it's, you know, it, it has um, a better grip as part of the figure, and this also allows the waist articulation to function just fine. I mean, like, the figure can't exactly spin around 180 degrees on the waist because of the way it's shaped, but he at least gets a natural range of torso movement that a normal body would have. So, yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a um, nice economic way to use the figure's own, um, you know, the, the, the qualities that the figure has to enhance the custom. So, that being said, everything needed to be painted. Um... For the, he's mostly like this uh, neutral flat blue color, which I happen to actually have. Like this is just one of the shades of blue that my paint kit came with, so yay. And um, you know, the suit outfit is mostly just uh, black with some green highlights uh, that goes all over the torso and the arms and all that. And um, all when all is said and done, we have a uh, shark. We we have Blade the shark. And, um, you know, as most sharks do, Blade does have a little bit of scars. Um, I guess, you know, when you're a shark, you kind of live the aggressive life, so scars are a common thing for them to have. Uh, the scars are just, uh, you know, some lightly gray paint applied on top of his uh, sharky blue skin. And one final thing, that Sonic the Hedgehog head went neatly onto the neck ball joint of the Call of Duty soldier with zero need for modification. Like, it just pops right on there, and you get a really good range of motion. He can turn, and he can even do inquisitive tilts and move his head back a little bit like he's looking up for swimming. So, that's actually, that actually works so shockingly well on the ball joint. And it must be a complete coincidence, too. Although this is, because, like, neck ball joints do tend to vary for Jazzwares figures. Like, Amy Rose had a bigger uh, hole in her neck than Sonic does because her neck peg is thicker. But it also fit on um, on one of these Mega Constructs figures' bodies just fine. Um, you know, I'm guessing, I'm guessing there's just enough of a fudge factor in there that these balls just kind of happen to slot in there perfectly. So, yes, um, an Aquatic Mobian. That is the flavor that we are starting the year 2023 with. Thank you all for watching the video, and um, hopefully now that the holiday season is over, I will have more spare time and won't feel so tired, so I'll be able to make more toys for you guys. This is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.